Hey there, my name is Drew Brashler, and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you about parallel drum groups or a drum smash group. If you're brand new to my channel, I'm all about helping you feel more confident in production gear no matter where you're starting from. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, what a parallel drum group is, is we're going to take all of the drums and put them into one subgroup. And then we're gonna take certain portions of the drums and put them into another subgroup. And then we're going to compress one of them a lot and then basically blend the two of those groups into each other to make this explosive, massive drum sound. And so I have a set of tracks pulled up here and I have my drums. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and play this for you to hear what it is on the before we go into drum groups. So here we go. So I have a kick out, a kick in, snare top, snare bottom, tom one, tom two, floor tom, uh, there's no hi-hat, uh, that's actually a snare trigger, which I'm not gonna be using for this video, and then we have uh, an overhead left and an overhead right. So now what I'm gonna do is show you the individual drum channels here. So I have my kick out, which is my beta 52 from Shure. My kick in is my Sennheiser E901. Here's the two of them blended. Here's my snare top mic. This is a Shure Beta 57. And then here's the bottom, which is a Shure SM57. Here's the two of them blended. Here's my Tom mics, which are all Sennheiser E904s. And then here's my overheads, which are Mojave MA50s. And here's all of it together. So when we're using subgroups, instead of sending the channel directly to the stereo left right bus, I'm actually going to send it to a mix bus that's set up as a subgroup and then that subgroup is going to feed the main left right bus. Now the benefit of doing this is it allows you to do global compression or global EQ to the subgroup. And so we're actually gonna use parallel subgroups, which means that I'm going to use two subgroups for my drums. And I'm going to set them up as two stereo, that way I can keep my panning of toms, hi-hats, overheads, that sort of thing. I can keep those panned in my mix overall. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to set up two subgroups with the Behringer X32. So I'm going to select my bus masters and I'm going to use my bus seven through 10 as my two stereo subgroups. So what I'll do is I'll select my bus seven and I'm going to go and to config. So I'm going to select my bus seven and I'm gonna press home and then tab over to config. And then once I'm here, I'm going to set this as a subgroup and I'm going to press assign. Now, when you do this, it changes the seven and eight together as a pair to be subgroups. And it does wipe out any levels that you have set previously. So if this was set as a uh, pre-fader or a post-fader bus, then it's going to basically erase all of the settings that you had going to this mix bus. So make sure that you're doing this if you really want to. So um, we can go ahead and press confirm. And now this bus seven and eight are both set up as a subgroup. And then I'm going to go to bus nine and 10 and do the same thing. So I'm going to go select subgroup and confirm. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to link these two subgroups. So I have seven and eight, I'm going to link them and confirm. And then I'm going to go to bus nine and 10, link and confirm. Once I've done this, I'm going to go ahead and label these. So we can go to setup and we can go over to name and icon and I'm going to color these and label them. So I'm going to go and label this. So 
So this is going to be titled Drums, and then I'm going to go to my Mix Bus 8, and I'm going to title this Drums as well. And then I'm going to go to my Mix Bus 9, and I'm going to title this Drums Parallel. Now, because I don't have enough space for writing parallel, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put two slashes here, just like that. So drums slash slash, which is a parallel line. And I'm going to do the same thing on this one. And we can see that it's in the suggestion right here, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. And then I'm going to go ahead and color this blue, and I'm going to invert the colors on my bus 9 and 10. So, And so I have my bus 7 and 8 and my bus 9 and 10. I'm going to go ahead and turn up 7 and 8 up to 0, and I'm going to go ahead and leave the parallel drum bus down. So my bus is 9 and 10. I'm going to go ahead and leave those down for right now uh, to show you what we're going to do with it later. So I'm going to now set these to be sent to the stereo bus. So I'm going to select my bus 7 and 8, and I'm going to hit the stereo bus. And then I'm going to go to my bus 9 and 10, and then make sure that these are also going to my stereo bus. And so we can now see that these are all going to my stereo bus. The next thing that I'm going to do is go over to my channels of my drums and I'm going to route them to these subgroups. So I can, on the right hand side of my board, I can go ahead and select bus 1 through 8. I can press select on my drum group and I can press sends on fader. Now the benefit of this is now when I go over to my left fader bank is now I can unmute the channels that need to go into the subgroup. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute all of my drums that I want going into this subgroup. Now because it's a subgroup, it is post fader. So it will take the mix that you have of your faders and send them into this subgroup, which is what we want for this. And now I'm going to go to my bus 9 and 10, and I'm going to only select drums that are not cymbals. So I would not send my hi-hat, I wouldn't send any splash cymbals, I wouldn't send my overheads, and I wouldn't send my ride. So only physical drums. So kick drum, snare, all the toms. If there's a snare 2, I would be sending that to this as well. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute all of my drums that are not symbols. So we can see that I have my kick out, kick in, snare top, snare bottom, tom, one through floor tom, and that's all that I'm sending to my parallel drum group. Once I've done that, I can get out of sense on fader, and now what I need to do is I need to unassign all of these drums from the stereo bus. And the reason being is because they're being sent through the mix buses, my subgroup that I just set up. So I'm going to go ahead and select my kick out, and I'm going to remove it from the stereo bus. Same thing with the rest of my channels. Perfect. So now I have all of these drums going through my mix bus 7 and 8, and then I have the drums minus cymbals going through my bus 9 and 10. And so if we go ahead and press play on this again, we will hear that all of this is working. So I'm going to go to bus 1 through 8 and show you here. And if I turn this down, this is the entire drum group right here. And then we can go to my bus 9 and 10, and this is just the drums minus the cymbals. Now the beauty of this is I'm going to leave these up at zero. Now what I'm going to do with my bus 9 and 10 is I'm going to do a little bit of extra things to it. So like I was saying, my bus 7 and 8 is all of the drums going straight to the stereo bus. And usually I will just leave these the way they are. Sometimes I'll do a little bit of compression on it, maybe some EQ, but for the most part, this drum group gets sent to the stereo bus as is. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mute this bus 7 and 8, which is my drum group, and I'm going to go and focus on my parallel drum group, which is my bus 9 and 10. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this up to 0, and we are going to select this and apply a massive amount of compression. I am wanting this to sound super, super compressed, and there's going to be a benefit of this, and so let's go ahead and do this right now. So one thing that I need to set up first is I want to set my EQ to be after my compression. 
And to do that, we're going to press select on nine and 10, and we're going to tab all the way over until we get to home. And right here, we can see dynamics, and I want this to be pre my EQ. And the reason for this is I'm wanting to apply some massive EQ sounds to this mix bus once it's gone through the compression. So we can now go over to my dynamics and I'm going to set this to active. I'm going to put my ratio to 10 to one. I'm gonna set my attack to 10, my hold all the way down at zero, and my release is going to be about 70. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and press play on this, and then we're going to adjust this threshold down so we're just applying a massive amount of compression. So we're going to go ahead and hit play here. So this does sound very compressed, which is exactly what I'm wanting. I'm then going to apply a little bit of makeup gain to just to bring this back up just a little bit. And even though we're getting about 12 dB of compression here, I'm going to probably set my makeup gain to about five. The next thing I'm going to do is go over to my EQ. Now with my EQ, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add low end in a low shelf at about 150 and below. Okay, let's go back to my marker here. I'm then going to add a high shelf at 10K and boost that about 4 dB. And then the very last thing is I'm going to go and find 400 Hertz, this sound, and I'm going to remove this. Now we can see that I am at this point too much on my levels here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually bring my, my makeup gain back down just a little bit. Okay, so we have done that. Now, I have my drums going into this without the cymbals, and I have my drums with the cymbals going into this group. And so I'm going to just go ahead and pull up my buses on my left side of the board here. And I'm wanting to let you hear the, just the drums going to the main bus, and then I'm going to start bringing in my parallel drum group into this. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute my drum bus, and I have my parallel drum bus down here. So let's go ahead and select that marker and press play. And so I'm going to start bringing this in. So if I take away my parallel drum bus, add it in. Take it away. Add it in. So by blending the drum bus along with the parallel drum bus together, we can just create this massive sound on the drums. You could hear the low end just expand, there was a lot more sizzle on the snare, and then that snare also rang out for a lot longer of a time because of this heavy compression that we were placing on these drums. Now you could dial this in a little bit more and add in some more processing on some of these channels, but I'm actually pretty happy with where it's sitting right now. Now one thing that I caution you about with 
with this is if you want to use some of the compression inside of your effects section on, say, your parallel drum bus, what's going to happen is there's going to be added latency by going through the effects section. So you're going to actually have to apply the same effect to both 7 and 8 and 9 and 10 and dial in the compression more on your parallel drum bus. For instance, if I was to do this, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my compression here on my parallel drum bus, and we're going to go into my library. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn off my dynamics here on my parallel drum bus, and I'm going to go into my effects section, and I'm going to change my effects 5 to be a stereo Ultimo Comp, as well as my effect 6 to be my Ultimo Comp as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to route my mix bus 9 and 10 into my Ultimo Comp. So we can go and select bus 9 and 10. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert these. Now, just from inserting them, not even dialing in any of this stuff, what's going to happen is there's going to be latency added to my parallel drum bus. And so we can go ahead and press play. And all of a sudden, our drums sound really weird. And that's because there's added latency on my bus 9 and 10, but that latency is not added on my 7 and 8. So what we would have to do is we'd have to add the same effects rack on my bus 7 and 8. So we can go back to home and we can select our effects 5 and I'm going to go find my mix bus 7 and my mix bus 8. And we can insert this and then once we've done that, then if I press play, it's back to being in time. So now what we would have to do is I would have to make this to not be compressing. So I'm going to lower my input and raise my output. Perfect, and then we can go over to my bus nine and 10. And if we were using this, I would go ahead and set this to all buttons mode and we would set our attack to be pretty quick and our release to be super fast. Okay, and so now what we can do is we have my normal drum bus along with my parallel drum bus. Now another thing that you could do is you could bypass your effects 5 um, and just make it not active and that would still have that plugin inserted on this mix bus but not have it actually processing the sound. And so we can demonstrate that right now. And so here is my things together here and I have my mix bus 7 and 8 going through effects 5 and I'll just unactivate this. And there it is activated. So that brings me to the conclusion of this video today. I hope this was really helpful for you and it is one of my favorite things to do with drums, especially mixing live or in a studio or for broadcast. I always run my drums through a parallel set of subgroups and just apply a massive amount of compression on one of them and leave the cymbals through the other. 
Honestly, it sounds great, especially with some really good subwoofers in your room. It just sounds awesome. If you haven't already, make sure to check out my website at drewbrashler.com where I have an X32 fundamentals course where I have released my favorite five fundamentals of learning the Behringer X32 to make you more confident with your mixing. If you do happen to have any questions about this video, feel free to post those in the comment section below. And as well, if you have an idea of a video that you want me to make, Put those in the comment section below because I'm always reading through those comments to find videos that are going to be helpful for you. Have a great day.